As I paint the Cheeky Kiki from Studio Ghibli's Kiki's Delivery Service, let me share with you six underrated tips that will help you take your maca and mixed media painting skills to the next level. It's been quite a journey for me to figure out what works and what doesn't, and now I have some fresh insights to share with you. These tips come from both those aha moments and the occasional oops moments that arise when exploring a new medium. Let's start with the challenge of blending with markers, especially for those of us who have a background in watercolors. When working with markers, the approach is quite different compared to watercolors. Unlike watercolors, where the general rule is to start with lighter shades and move towards darker tones, markers actually require a reverse approach. Although it's possible to go from light to dark with markers as well, if you want to blend the colors, you need to work in the opposite direction. Let me show you what I mean. Here I applied a layer of light purple over dark gray, and what happens next might surprise you. Instead of the gray remaining unchanged, it begins to blend into the purple, creating a soft and subtle transition between the two colors. This interaction is quite fascinating and it took me some time to fully get how it works. When you work from light to dark, you are not able to blend along the borders of your darker color because you would just make this part dark as well. But when you go over the darker part with the lighter color, you are not darkening it, but rather dissolve the darker ink and make it blend into the lighter area. And this is why it only works from dark to light. You need to put the darker color first before going over it with the lighter ink. It was a bit strange at first for me to adapt to it, but it does create a neat blending effect. But it goes against the traditional methods of blending and layering with watercolors, so I needed to push myself to stick with it. Now, the second way to blend, which I will call the traditional method, is working from light to dark, like when I work with watercolors. This is a safe way to ensure that you don't accidentally gotten too dark in one area because you are slowly blocking the colors in and building depth. It's not really blending though, but rather a tiling effect for which you need to find the in-between colors in your gradient. I'm used to this technique because it's the same when I work with gouache, so out of comfort I prefer it for the rest of this painting. To be honest with you, I was a bit anxious to paint all the darkest areas first and then blend them in with the light markers. Too daunting for me. However, I want to try the new blending approach more often in future. Tip number two, mastering the colorless blender. This tip might not seem like a tip, but rather an insight into my experience with the colorless blender. While I'm no expert at using markers, I've learned a lot about the colorless blender and how it can be a useful tool. It's a bit of a wild card, not a cure-all, but it can be quite helpful. I've had to experiment how to make it work for me. Sometimes it's like a little helper, blending colors in unexpected ways, but other times it can be a bit of a rebel, smudging where I least expect it. I approached the colorless blender with a spirit of experimentation and not as a definite solution. Rather than just dabbing at a spot here and there, I will go over larger areas to gently coax the colors into a softer version of themselves. For instance, when I cover the entire region of Kiki's face, the colors are gently blended together, creating a slightly blended appearance. Although it's not perfect, I have managed to soften the face to serve as a foundation for my color pencil technique later on. And although the blender can be a little unruly at times and cause unexpected smudging, I believe it's an opportunity for me to understand how the alcohol inks interact on paper. However, that being said, if you have any tips or tricks about working with the blender that you would like to share, I would greatly appreciate it. Despite feeling that I have improved, I haven't quite gotten the hang out of it yet. Tip number three, creating a color chart. Now I want to double down on using the color chart, a fundamental and powerful tool that I rely on. It helps me choose the right shade with confidence, especially when bringing a character to life, like our beloved Kiki. The chart is a visual sheet sheet of my color palette, which saves me time and ensures that the colors I use are the ones I envision and need. It also helps me to keep track of the changes in my markers hues. Over time, the marker's colors subtly shifts and fades, and an older chart reflects these changes. 
This foresight is invaluable, especially when revisiting a palette for a project or after some time has passed. When I work with markers, the color chart is a constant. Before I even start working, I consult it. It saves me time, conserves materials, and spares me the heartache of a color gone awry. For instance, Kiki's vibrant dress was achieved by layering the right purple tones, and finding those only took a few seconds as opposed to trying out various purple shades until I finally found the right one. I've also sorted my markers into different groups, such as blues, pinks, greens, yellows, and so on. This makes it even easier for me to quickly grab the right marker without searching forever for it. Now, when working with markers on a larger scale or for an extended period of time, they eventually run out of ink. And this is where the new refills from Uhuhu come in handy, the wonderful sponsor of this video. Their innovative refills are incredibly simple to use and I'm thrilled to share my experiences with you. To be completely honest with you, I was a little anxious at first and didn't know what to do because I quickly feel overwhelmed when reading through an instruction manual. But the process turned out to be so effortless and hassle-free that I can recommend it with confidence to anyone who might be feeling the same way. Uhuhu provides clear instructions that make the process almost intuitive. There are two methods to choose from. Either replenishing the ink directly into the cartridge after removing the brush tip, or applying the ink onto the brush tip itself. The latter might take a tad longer, but it's incredibly straightforward perfect for when you want to refill and get straight back to your art. When it comes to refilling the ink cartridges, it's important to keep a paper towel handy to avoid any potential mess. Refilling the cartridge is a simple process, but it requires patience and a steady hand. I slowly and carefully fill the cartridge with ink, making sure not to overfill it or spill any ink in the process. I was a little too impatient at first and wanted to fill more than just a few drops into the cartridge, and that was when the ink spilled. This is why it's important to only refill the cartridges drop by drop. So remember to take it slow and steady, keeping a paper towel handy, this way the refill process is easy and mess-free. Uhuhu also included a set of liquid fineliners and gel pens, which are super useful tools in my art and daily life. It was a delightful surprise. I love using fine liners and gel pens in my work. They add delicate details to characters, help me write down notes in my planner, and let me write heartfelt thank you cards to my collectors. The fine liners in particular are incredibly precise and versatile, with a range of shapes and sizes to choose from, and they make a perfect addition to my mixed media tool set. I'm still stoked with the quality of Uhuhu's markers and I can wholeheartedly recommend them to everyone who always wanted to try out markers. They are fun, easy to work with and are super vibrant. And with their new refills, you can finally refill your favorite colors. If you're as excited about Uhuhu's markers and their other art supplies as I am, you will be happy to know that Uhuhu is offering a generous Black Friday deal from October 31st to November the 30th. You can get amazing discounts up to 25%. Just follow the link in the video description to visit the Uhuhu website and check out their fantastic art supplies. Next tip, use mixed media. Mixing different materials is essential in my art. Understanding their strengths and weaknesses and using them in conjunction creates the best outcome. Each has its own set of rules and part of the fun is figuring out how to bend them to your will. And when in the background of this piece I encountered a bit of a hiccup, the mixed media approach really shines. I will be honest, I didn't use marker paper, which resulted in this uneven color distribution. As you can see, the background looks a bit patchy and blotchy here and there. And to address the irregular patches, I reached for my trusty watercolors. With a few strategic strokes of purple and blue, not only was I able to smooth out the inconsistencies, but I also introduced some of my beloved watercolor textures. These additions brought a new dimension to the background, complementing the vivid blue of the markers and creating a more cohesive look. Gouache, with its opaque and matte finish, is another excellent tool for refining a piece. For instance, to achieve a crisp horizon line, I applied blue gouache. It's a simple yet effective way to clean up any areas that need a bit more definition. Gouache can also be a lifesaver for correcting any other little mishaps that might occur along the way. 
Now, I am experienced in working with mixed media, but I can totally understand if you feel overwhelmed and might find it difficult to determine what's right for your art. Therefore, I'd like to suggest subscribing to my Patreon page. By subscribing, you will gain access to over 200 unedited mixed media painting videos and step-by-step -step lessons that will help you master the fundamental elements of mixed media painting, including layering, lifting of paint, wet and wet and wet on dry techniques, and brush and paper control. You will find a link to my Patreon page in the video description. Now, the approach of mixed media isn't just about fixing mistakes, it's about enhancing your artwork. It allows you to bring together the best aspects of each medium to create a piece that's rich in texture and depth. It's about not being afraid to mix and match, to experiment and to find creative solutions to the challenges that arise during the creative process. For instance, when working on Kiki's cat Gigi, I found that using markers for very fine details like whiskers, eyes and black fur was not effective due to their size. Instead, I turned to gouache paint for its opaque character. With gouache, I was able to add the intricate details that marker couldn't achieve. It was a perfect solution for small parts of the painting that required precision and detail. I also used color pencils to refine Kiki's face which was a crucial step to make it look exactly as smooth as I envisioned it. And I also used one of my all-time favorite techniques with color pencils, which is adding a decorative hatching pattern on some areas of the painting, like the purple dress. I absolutely love this technique and I even dedicated one of my Patreon tutorials to this. Speaking of details, let's move on to the next tip, painting on a larger scale. When it comes to painting with markers, one of the game-changing tips I can offer is to think big. Literally. The nature of marker tips means that they are not always conducive to minute details. But rather than seeing this as a limitation, let's view it as an opportunity to scale up our art. When we make our canvas larger, we have more space to explore and to experiment with. This means we can blend colors more easily, creating even more beautiful and dynamic artwork. For this painting, I opted for a substantial 14 by 20 inches format. This larger canvas size allowed me to work freely, applying broad strokes of ink without getting restrained by details. For example, when I filled in the area of the dress, it was such a liberating feeling to move the marker across the paper, like when you paint with a big brush on a giant canvas. It was so much fun! If I had painted Kiki's painting smaller, I would have faced difficulties when painting her radio, bag and broom. However, with this larger scale, the objects were big enough for me to paint precisely with the brush tips, and I was able to layer the colors beautifully. Naturally, some details require precision beyond what markers can provide, even on a larger scale. That's where our mixed media approach shines again. But the strategy of starting big gives us a solid foundation and makes the whole painting process much easier and more fun. Fading. In the realm of art, time has a way of leaving its mark, quite literally when it comes to the medium of markers. It's an aspect of the medium we must accept, the subtle yet inevitable fading of colors as they age. This is a crucial consideration, especially when working with alcohol markers known for their vibrant but sometimes transient hues. To navigate this, I work with my color chart, like I said before. The color swatches on it have mellowed, to give me a good representation of how the colors will stand the test of time. The most pronounced shift I have observed is within the spectrum of pinks. They tend to drift away from their original vibrancy more so than other colors. It's an interesting oddity that has led me to a mixed media solution. Instead of relying solely on these temporary pinks, I substitute or reinforce them with other mediums – gouache, colored pencils and watercolors. Such as the color Oprah Rose from Rinse and Newton, which uses the pigment PR122. And despite it being described as fugitive, it's a dependable shade of pink that can last up to 15 years. I was delighted when I discovered this during a conversation with a scientist at the Rembrandt paint manufacturing plant in the Netherlands, who has over 30 years of experience in this profession and knows everything about colors. Understanding the materials you work with is obviously very useful to ensure that the artwork stands the test of time. 
By predicting how materials will change over time, we can try to mitigate potential problems or failures and develop strategies to extend their lifespan. However, we must accept that nothing remains the same over time and the change of pigments is a natural occurrence. Therefore, in addition to alleviating the change of pigments, I scan all of my paintings in high resolution and can provide a fine artwork production as a replacement in case anything happens to the original artwork. And to wrap it up, I hope these tips have inspired you to take your marker and mixed media painting skills to the next level. Remember that experimentation and a willingness to try new techniques are key to finding what works best for you. And as for Kiki, well, she has been a delightful subject to paint and a reminder of the joy that comes with exploring different mediums and subjects. And if you have fallen in love with Kiki as much as I have, I'm excited to share that the original painting is available for purchase on my website. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out Uhuhu's amazing Black Friday deal as well as my Patreon tutorials for more in-depth insights into painting techniques and mixed media approaches. See you next time, bye bye!